Excellent. As I say, I must just say congratulations um, <clears throat> on Pocket Universe. Um, Thank you. I've been a, a, a fan of yours um, for probably since about 1985. So, uh, oh, really? Yes. And uh, to say it's uh, it's amazing. As I say, the progression um, you know has been has been nice to watch um, over the years. But I think this uh, the new album uh, fits perfectly in into sort of uh, where music has come to, but also what I think what Yellow as, uh, as a group um, has also influenced musically. And I don't know if you would sort of agree with that. Yes, I mean, I uh, hear people talking about that and uh, I start uh, believing it. I mean, definitely uh, we used uh, the uh, technologies that are now common sense uh, before they were really available and we had a sound concept and a rhythm concept which uh, with today's machine became common sense but when we started 20 years ago was uh, pretty uh, original and uh, I do believe that a lot of uh, our early albums are now uh, being appreciated by uh, young DJs and uh, by young people who hear what we did uh, back then. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, uh, I do not see ourselves as avant-garde or as pioneers or something, whatever. Uh, I just uh, see, uh, looking back, that we had no other possibility to do uh, uh, to make music than uh, the way we made music because we had this existential feeling uh, or need to express ourselves, Boris and myself, and we did not believe in rock and pop and all the mainstreams of this big phenomena that came from England and the United States. Uh, we had to uh, grow our own roots uh, in order to find our own musical identity, and uh, this is basically what uh, we did back then. We did not create of all gods, we just created ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's been it's been 17 years now. Um, and I mean, you, you probably now, I think it's probably one of your strongest points because of where, or because of where music is going now. Um, how does it feel to still be, as I say, releasing albums, as I say, after 17 years? Well, it's not such a big change uh, than uh, from the beginning, the working process is still pretty much the same. I even believe that our last album is uh, more similar to the very first one in the way we approached it. Uh, we did not have song structures in mind. Uh, it was a very unplanned, very spontaneous album, as we uh, say uh, in uh, when we talk about it. Uh, it was an album that had a lot to do with just, how should I compare it? Like, uh, it, it's really like two boys who go together to the beach with the idea to build a castle of sand. And then whatever they find at this beach uh, becomes part of their concept. It's not like planned how this castle uh, should look like. It's much more a, uh, a uh, a pr an, an inner process. It's a process of uh, finding the castle or the or the, the house of sand inside yourself. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, uh, like uh, maybe album six or seven, they were more truly orientated also towards uh, a certain commercial impact. You know, once you sold a couple of million albums. Whether you want it or not, you become part of a music system, of a music industry. And it's not so easy to uh, get out of this <coughs> system and to really just do what you like to do. Sure, sure. This is not because you are censored from the industry. It's because uh, you are just uh, part of that circus mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it is difficult to uh, find your spontaneity again, and uh, this is, I think, what we achieved is with our last album. Mm -hmm. And because, I mean, as I say, that uh, that spontaneity, um, were, were you actually planning to release an album, as I say, this year, or was it just a case of, with that spontaneity, that it all came together so 
um, so naturally that uh, that the album sort of uh, was completed. It really came together very naturally. We we never uh, planned release dates much ahead. It just uh, whatever happens happens. I even believe that in the past we sometimes had uh, too much freedom, uh, I think it's uh, uh, not good if you don't release anything for three years. You know, I think that um, you should uh, be in touch with an audience and with the outside world uh, more frequently. And uh, in the future, we are planning to release 12 inches like every two, three months, just uh, to uh, sort of uh, also be in touch with the outside world. You know, Boris Blank very much likes to work on his own. Uh, his studio ideally would be on the moon uh, uh, and he truly would like to be just on a piece of solar driftwood uh, sailing through time and space and creating its sounds. But I believe that uh, music is a, a, a communication and I believe that you should communicate what you're doing more frequently and not sort of keep it for yourself for three or four years and then release an album and that's it, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think especially today, when this whole dance movement, which is such a spontaneous movement, is so big, uh, you should <coughs> be in touch with that. Mm, sure, sure. And, um, you know, you've always made music that seems to be sort of ahead of itself, obviously, as we've said, but, uh, you know, in its sound. Would you would you say that Papa Universe is in the same league as uh, as the earlier albums? In, in so far as well, you know, it it, it is like uh, uh, with painting. You know, when uh, when you uh, when you are a, a cubist painter who was probably the first who really did this, uh, and suddenly you're surrounded by cubists, uh, then you're not so much ahead of your time anymore. But uh, that was never our issue or our our target to be ahead of our time. I think time was really catching up with us, but uh, we can not change this fact and we can also not change our music because our music is uh, like uh, a musical uh, face. It's like a second face, you know? It's not something that we put on like a jacket and say, okay, now, let's wear an even more avant jacket. It doesn't work like this. It's our very clear identity. And of course we hope to progress. Of course we hope to reinvent ourselves constantly. But uh, you never know where you really stand. And sometimes you become your own epigon and you become very repetitive and, uh, and maybe even boring. But this is part of the career of every artist. And the important thing is that you know about these things and that you don't lie sure. about these things to yourself. But to change it, to influence it uh, sort of uh, in, in, in intendedly is, uh, is very difficult. Uh, I think uh, you have to allow uh, being really being driven, being thrown around by uh, just uh, be open to what comes to you, you know. That's uh, our concept, really. But you never know what's happening. Sure, sure. And um, with uh, with your earlier albums and and also um, with Pocket Universe, um, you weren't taking your influences from what was happening around you, as far as rock was concerned, and what was happening, as as you said, um, sort of in Europe and in and in the in the States. Where where did you get this uh, your influences from to create the kind of music that you have created to to now? Well, that's a, a very difficult question. I think Boris Blank, especially, uh, he was influenced by everything that sounds on this planet. He was influenced by uh, the sound of diesel engines uh, because he was driving a truck for 10 years. Uh, he was influenced by the sound of nature, the sound of a river, the sound of uh, uh, what, whatever sounds, including all the music, you know. Uh, but it is not uh, a very clear style that influenced uh, Yellow because uh, the, the style of Yellow from the beginning on were, was their own style, their own roots that they were growing in the deepest 
musical provinces of Switzerland, you know. So the influences uh, are a conglomerate of whatever sounds on this planet. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you've, you've also, um, you've been classified as a cult band in the sense that you've enjoyed, um, you know, you've enjoyed more than, I think, especially in the 80s, an underground following, which has now become mainstream, um, as we've said, musically. Um, did, did, did you enjoy sort of being classified um, as that, or would you rather would, would you rather see yourselves as or being seen as something that's truly commercial, um, you know, with a uh, with a mass mass market? Well, this has two aspects. The first is that we uh, do not really care uh, about our image and what uh, what we are considered, because we cannot change this anyhow. We are who we are. Uh, maybe sometimes we are considered avant-garde and sometimes uh, we are considered uh, mainstream. You know, I mean, I, I, I really don't know and, and I also, I, I couldn't care less in a way because uh, we are not trying to fit into any of these formats. Uh, the formats are being put over our music uh, later and uh, it makes us sometimes laugh uh, where we end up in which drawer we end up, you know. It's definitely not intended. The other aspect, of course, is that, uh, like almost every artist, uh, we uh, would like uh, that uh, as as many people as possible hear and like uh, our music, uh, and uh, as a result of that, buy our our CDs. But uh, we are not, uh, how should I say, we are not compromising our music into <coughs> any uh, format in order to sell more records. We've always had a very uh, loyal following of uh, yellow uh, uh, experts, I would almost like to say. And uh, we've always had all the artistic freedom from uh, the financial freedom that was created through our uh, CDs. And uh, as we are not uh, interested in uh, the sort of uh, uh, big materialistic things of rock and pop, uh, as long as we have our musical freedom, uh, we are just fine, you know, it's, uh, it's we, 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 we're doing okay. Sure, sure. And um, <clears throat> you've worked with, uh, with various people um, over the years, and uh, what, one person that sort of interests me uh, particularly is uh, Billy McKenzie. Um, yeah. Uh, how did you actually get to work together? Um, I think uh, a friend of ours in England uh, proposed that Billy should sing backing vocals on uh, a very early Yellow album. This is like uh, 12 or years back. Yes. And this is how we got in touch. And we really... Uh, uh, we really built uh, a very nice relationship with uh, Billy, who, as you know, unfortunately uh, died uh, a couple of months ago, uh, which was a very sad thing, especially for Boris, who was very close to him. And uh, Billy always felt uh, very uh, good in our studio. He was able to truly uh, uh, be a free spirit and a free singer uh, together with the music of Boris Blank. They had a very close uh, human and artistic uh, uh, relationship and uh, Billy's death came uh, uh, was a real shock for Boris. I mean, he, he, he couldn't uh, believe it and understand it and it was also a big surprise because we never knew about this other the side of Billy, uh, which obviously has been there, but when he was in Zurich working with Boris, he was always very, very happy, and so were we. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. And um, to say, going back to um, when you launched Pocket Universe um, in Munich last December, um, can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about um, how, how that launch went, the whole multimedia sort of side of it? Yeah. Well, we went to a planetarium, and of course planetariums are 
always trying to look very important and give you a bombastic image of the, uh, the universe. And we kind of uh, ridiculed uh, this whole uh, situation by using all kinds of little uh, kitchen tools and household tools that were flying around in space that we uh, made look like spaceships. And uh, so we made uh, the uh, pocket universe of our kitchen and our houses into the real universe. And uh, it was very funny to see the reaction of the audience to uh, the contradiction of this bombastic planetarium which normally is uh, just full of stars and galaxies and suns, and suddenly you have like uh, uh, screwdrivers and uh, corkscrews and tin openers and uh, uh, little forks and knives and all kinds of things that uh, are highly unimportant. Mm, 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 absolutely. <laughs> and um, as the as show as is still on, you know. Uh -huh. It's become a very popular, almost uh, cult thing in Munich and uh, people go there uh, it's on every 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 day twice right. in the evening uh, yellow's pocket universe and it became very popular people go there and have fun yeah yeah it would be actually quite interesting if you put that on on video um, you know for people that you know obviously outside of uh, Munich and the rest of the world I'm sure to make to uh, to make for some good viewing yeah mm -hmm. and um, you were, you were saying earlier that you are on your way to L.A. What is actually, um, what will you be doing there? Well, I'm working on a, on a, a fantasy film on a big uh, feature called The Lightmaker, uh, for which I created a whole uh, post-production sound design studio because this movie is very sound and music driven, it's a fairy tale, a, a modern fairy tale, and uh, we uh, work on this thing for a couple of years already, uh, in the meantime we have a big uh, studio around that film, just to finish that film, which later will be used uh, to uh, create soundtracks uh, and sound designs for uh, other movies, but right now, uh, this film of course is our main priority it's the first big yellow feature and it will be finished uh, in uh, the end of august oh, great. okay and is this is this way where you are moving to sort of ultimately do you sort of see that becoming a, a no i travel between zurich buenos aires and los angeles almost every month really okay. yeah okay okay and um to say, if I could ask you um, one one last favor, if I may, Dieter. Um, yeah. Uh, this interview is going to be going out on a um, on a show that I do for College Radio. Uh, would you be able? Yeah. To, would you do an ID for me? No problem at all. Okay. Um, so, what's the idea? Uh, the name of the show is the Cutting Edge. So. Um, the Cutting Edge. Correct. Yeah. So uh -huh. you, you could uh, just say hi. This is Dieter Meyer from Yellow. And you're listening to the cutting edge, something like that. Okay, no problem. No, no, not not your name. Um, well, you can do. So that's uh, my name is Jason. My surname is Curtis. Curtis. That's right. Uh, okay. So here we go. Yes, whenever you're ready. I'm ready. My name is Dieter Meyer from Yellow, and you're listening to Curtis on the Cutting Edge. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Pleasure. And as uh, I say, congratulations again uh, on the album. Um, Thank I, you. Uh, you. You you are, uh, well, you do enjoy, um, I think, still at this point, a cult following in South Africa. Um, but yeah, I hear so, yeah. I mean, that's one of the countries that I've never been in my life, and uh, that's on my priority list. I want to be there the sooner the better. Yes, and as I said, there's a lot happening here musically, so... I think it, I think you could actually uh, probably uh, come across and do some interesting interpretations of what we are doing. Don't yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Okay, Curtis. Thank you very very much. All the best, and, and I hope to see you soon. Lovely. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.